All right, hello guys. I'm Adam with Roxy Cards, and we're here with the one, the only John Finkel. How's it going? Uh, it's it's going pretty well. I'm pretty sure that my third teammate just locked up top eight. Perfect. Uh, I think, uh, barring some tiebreaker, unfortunate, uh, you know, unfortunateness, if that's a word, uh, <laughs> Jamie should be in the top eight at eighth. Uh, Chapin's the first seed, and Reed Duke is somewhere in the middle. Okay. Uh, of course, we, yeah. <laughs> if Jamie doesn't make it top eight, then then, then this video will, will show. Be a little sad. Uh, will be a little sad, but, <laughs> but I, I think he's a good. Well, we're wishing him luck. Um, so, what deck did you decide to pilot this weekend? Uh, I played black, blue, green control. Okay. Uh, it was designed by uh, originally designed by Andrew Cunio, uh, you know, Huey Jensen. Really liked to play with it a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually didn't really like it that much. I really didn't want to play it. Tried to do something else, but I, I just couldn't. Okay, so they convinced uh, you. And, and to be it. honest, well, uh, yeah, I mean, and the deck, I know in the first day it it went like 38-20 with two draws, mm -hmm. which is obviously like a really good record on almost two-thirds of its matches. Uh, and I don't know how it would well to today, but you know, two people playing it are, are in the top eight. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, I know Martel, Tom Martel is almost certainly in the top 16. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I, I assume it also did quite well today, so it looks like it was actually a really good choice. Okay, perfect. What do you think the deck's worst matchups are? You know, it's sort of deck that doesn't have any awful matchups, but it also doesn't have any great matchups. Mm -hmm. The uh, the other Channel Fireball team's version of Black Blue Green uh, is advantaged against us, uh, mostly because <laughs> it's like they're pre sideboarded against us. Mm -hmm. They have uh, four Ashiox and four Thoughtseize as main, while we have none of those cards. Yeah, you know, we have a couple Read Read the Bones, which are which are good in the, in the matchup. A uh, couple lands and. You know, a few removal spells. Mm -hmm. We have uh, you know, Drown and Sorrows. They don't have any main. Okay. Although, you know, uh, against, I guess against, you know, other decks in the field, having Drown and Sorrows is very good. Uh, yeah. J Jamie actually won his first game entirely because he was able to scry, scry into a Drown and Sorrow that killed oh. two Idolana Blossoms and two Brain Maggots. Oh. So, yeah, the Channel Fireball, the main Channel Fireball deck, Channel Fireball Prime, I don't know what we should call them, <laughs> uh, you know, probably would have lost that game. Okay. Uh, so, definitely a good call on that card. Well, it certainly worked out well. Our, our yeah. deck, uh, you know, we, well, I guess Josh is in the top eight with, with, with their with their decks, so uh, I guess they, they did pretty well, you know, they did pretty well, too. Um, and, um, you know, you've been into Magic for pretty much almost forever, as the game's <laughs> gone. You've been through the highs and lows of the game. Yeah. Uh, you notice the trend that it's becoming a more creature-focused uh, yeah. format. What are your thoughts on that? Do you like where it's going? I, I guess I'm pretty well known for, for not really liking that. <laughs> uh, you probably knew what I was going to answer beforehand. <laughs> yeah. I think it, it has been good for the growth of Magic, okay. which is a good thing. I think it's it's nice uh, from Wizards' perspective, from new players' perspective, that when you look at cards, the cards that look good mm -hmm. are actually good. Yeah. It, it's not like 15 years ago where someone sees Shiv and Dragon, they're like, oh my god. But yeah. really, it's, it's awful because people are playing Swords to Plowshares yeah. and... and Maybe terror removal. Yeah, you know, cards to cause one mana to remove a, a six mana spell. I do think that maybe they've gone a bit too far in the other direction. Okay. Uh, and, and also, I don't really like. Uh, so, years ago, decks used to have lots of commons and uncommons in them. You know, a few rares. Mm -hmm. Now it's. But a, now it's it's basically every playable card is a rare. They have the rares like ramped up so much more above the other power levels. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that in Patrick Chapin's main deck, the only non-rare cards are Blinding Light. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Everything else is a rare or a mythic. He has you know, 12 scry lands. I don't know how many mana confluence is two. Maybe, maybe he has four. And he has some basic lands. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'm not really in love with the sort of situation where the, the good cards are obvious. It's like, oh, here are the rare cards. These are the cards you're playing with and constructed. Uh, wh where they're that much more powerful than the other cards. Yeah. And also, yeah. It, it's not great for people who are in some of a budget. Yeah, getting into the game. Because now, most decks cost, you know, I mean, obviously hundreds of dollars, but, you know, many hundreds of dollars mm -hmm. uh, in order to have uh, you know, a competitive construct deck. Okay, perfect. And you've seen a lot of formats, and um, what are your thoughts on the Theros block? Because, you know, Theros started off strong. We had Born, which wasn't, um, or in many people's mind, a successful set, and then we have kind of the journey to kind of keep it balanced. How do you think this block is compared to other blocks that we've seen in the past? In terms of, of, of limited, 
I don't really like the direction that they've been moving in where they've made, uh, again, the rares are much better, which is, which kind of sucks a little bit because if you open up a broken rare, you have, you have such a huge advantage over other people, much larger than it used to be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, they've kind of worked to make uh, the threats better than the answers, and this kind of goes into making creatures better. But in limited formats, you get to situations where, because the formats end up being very aggressive and very fast, they add a lot of variance. If, mm -hmm. if somebody just stumbles a little bit on mana, either the aggressive deck doesn't draw its right mix of its two colors, uh, or creatures and tricks, it, it, it just can't end up winning. You have a slightly slower deck, if it, if it stumbles on its mana curve or, mm -hmm. or maybe misses a land drop, it's so far behind. Okay. Uh, one thing, though, that, that I do like they, uh, that they do in, in limited formats when they do it is when there's a, a kind of dominant strategy at the, at the beginning of the format when there's a, a way that's, that you're kind of looking to draft the cards. Mm -hmm. And then by the end of the format, that, that's gotten much weaker and that's more of a secondary strategy. So, uh, but, you know, by the end of, of Journey into Nyx, it, it had gone to be some of a slower format, which I liked. Yeah. Uh, in... in in Theros only, and, and to a slightly lesser extent, but but still mostly Theros, Born to Gods, you know, the the heroic decks were the best, especially you know, the white-based heroic. Mm. Uh, white's still probably the best color, but maybe not by quite as much. But now with, uh, with Journey to Nyx, there's just like a lot less heroic enablers. Uh, so trying to draft the heroic deck is, 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 is a lot more difficult. You, you don't get the sort of seven heroic creatures, eight enablers yeah. type deck that it maybe used to get. Yeah, and, and so it, it's nice because it kind of changes some of the valuations of cards from each from earlier sets. Okay, perfect. Um, and going back again, sorry. So, because I grew up on the time when the Garfield versus Finkel deck came out. Yeah. So you're probably the only player that has their name on an official Magic product. Okay. Um, which, you know, that's, that's something nice. If they did something like that today, what two names would you think would be a good addition? So they're not going to put... Uh, so Garfield's not going to be one of them? No, so you guys are excluded. So just, just, just two Pro Tour players? Well, yeah, we'll do the two Pro Tour players, and then I don't know how much you follow like the Wizards employees, but maybe a Wizards employee and you know a Pro Tour player. I mean, also. the best Magic Land Wizards employee, I would assume... I mean, the only one... Well, I guess there's Turian and Worth, who runs Moto, would probably mm -hmm. be one of them. I mean, I think in terms of players, you probably go with Billy Jensen. I mean, I think he's probably the best Magic player now. Okay. He's kind of all fame. He's just, you know, he's just a great Magic player, a great guy, too. Yeah. Uh, so I guess it would probably be something like that. Okay. You know, if you want to throw in another pro, I don't know, maybe someone like Ben S. Okay. Another great player, you know, also at the top of his game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I, I guess if it were two players, I would probably do, you know, Billy okay. Jensen and, and Ben S. And... See what they can you come know, up with. And maybe, maybe they can play against Worth and Turian in some sort of tag Four team, players. although it, <laughs> it, it's, it's not going to be pretty, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd probably be a blowout. Um, going back to that, how did that even product come about? Uh, they, they just asked me to do it. Okay. Uh, it was kind of funny. They, uh, if you read it, they, they, they asked us to write something, but they want us to be like really trash talking. Okay. So I feel like people might look at it now and be like, oh man, look, look at John. He's, you know, so it's so like, like arrogant and all thing. that. But but that's what they wanted, right? Yeah, so yeah, I think yeah. I made like references to you know you, you choose Michael Jordan over uh, there's a Phil Neesmith who invented okay. basketball. Yeah yeah yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, and also I mean uh, so Richard did do a pretty good job of, of metagaming it. Yeah. He thought I was likely to play blue. Okay. So he actually had main deck Pyroblast in his deck. Mm. But well, the reality was a the blue wasn't really that great in that format and uh, and b uh, I thought that maybe he would think that but really but really a. Okay. So, uh, you know, I, I had a very good black red deck. And then they felt bad. They didn't want to sell these decks with one deck having two Pyroblasts with no targets. Yeah. And, and Richard actually thought of that. He was, so he, was, he said, hey, you know, if John's playing blue, I get these Pyroblasts. And if he's not playing blue, then I get to replace them. So he, he definitely did a good job of, of metagaming that format. But okay. So they kind of adjusted as necessary. Well, they, they, yeah, they basically said, okay, we're, we're not going to sell this product with two Pyroblasts and no targets and either deck for it. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, but but uh, you know I, I think my deck was probably a little a little you know better designed a little stronger mm -hmm. uh, and, and in, in the games I think like Richard got like land screwed one of the games or, or okay. whatever so it, it was kind of anticlimactic. Okay, and going back to the Pro Tour, so we're getting our top eight soon. Who do you think is going to take it? Uh, I mean, Shape is having a great day. Okay, uh, but I guess my my money. Well, I would say I'm going to be on Reed Duke. Uh, 
I'll, I'll go with Reed Duke for okay. the person that my money's going to be on. He's got a bad matchup against against Josh out of Layden mm -hmm. because you know the, the CFB bug is, is just advantage against ours, especially in game ones. But uh, I mean, Reed is on the short list of people who might be the best matchup player in the world right now. Yeah, it's been a long time coming for his first PT top eight, so I'm really excited for him. Oh yeah. Uh, and and if, if there was somebody in top eight that I had to pick, is, is you know from really stacked top eight, top eight to be the favorite, I guess I would go with Reed. But but it, it's really close. Okay, yeah. So it'll just be all about the cards. Yeah. Well, uh, John, thanks for your time, and uh, good luck with uh, traveling back. And we'll see you at the next program.